On a recent visit to a Mexican cruise port, my friend got robbed. I'm going to tell you what happened that day, what happened next, and what she would do differently. Plus, I've got my own tales of woe from my most recent cruise, my most recent visit to a Mexican cruise port. Cruise tips for how to be safe at port. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your one-stop shop for all things cruising. Stay up to date with everything that's going on in cruising by hitting the subscribe button with the notification bell. Go ahead, smack that like button, and let's get into this story. The story takes place a couple months ago where a friend of mine was on the NCL Bliss and she was visiting the very popular West Coast Mexican cruise port of Puerto Vallarta. Now, Puerto Vallarta, much like Cozumel, Mexico, in addition to all the other activities there available to cruisers, they have a wide variety of all-day beach clubs and all-day, all-inclusive resorts. And typically, you don't find these all-day inclusive resorts and all-day beach clubs as a ship excursion. This is one of those scenarios where if you want to utilize one of these places, you're going to have to make your way there using either public transportation or local taxi cabs. And look, the deeper I get into this story, you may be going, wow, this is like deja vu. I feel like I've heard this before. You may have heard part of this story before. My friend Don is a mutual friend of my other friend. Part of the story has been told, but I have the update and I also have what happened to me in Cozumel. So uh, yeah, new, new stuff. Check it out. Now my friend disembarked the NCL Bliss and she made her way to the city cab stand to catch a cab to her all-inclusive resort. She jumped in the next available cab. She told the driver her destination and they headed on their way. Now it didn't take long for the red flags to start to go up on this cab ride. It did not take long for that pit feeling in my friend's stomach to start to form. She said almost immediately the driver started asking her what seemed to be, in hindsight, qualifying questions. He seemed very curious about her being alone and about her plans and somewhere during the conversation she let it go that she did have friends cruising with her but they were still on the ship. Now she had done what many of us do. She had asked what the price to travel to the resort was. Price was established in advance but something weird happened as they approached the destination. The driver stopped before they got to the resort and wanted payment. Of course, that's a big red flag, but my friend went ahead and offered up cash, and the driver said, I'm sorry, I do not take cash. Now, if you've traveled in these Mexican ports at all, you know that that's very strange. Every cab I've ever taken in Cozumel, the cab I took in Puerto Vallarta, I paid with cash, and so she pressed again, I would prefer to pay with cash, and again, she was denied the cab driver, saying that she would have to pay with her credit card. Now, of course, this is a stressful decision time. You are not yet at your destination. You're in the cab with a stranger in a strange place. What, what would you have done in this situation? It's hard for me to say what I would have done. The, the options are pretty limited. What do you do? You just jump out of the cab, in a strange place, you throw money at the cabbie and hope that he goes away. You just jump out of the cab without paying, maybe putting yourself at risk of getting in trouble with law enforcement. And I think I would have done exactly what my friend did. She went ahead and offered up her credit card. And what's wild is the cabbie didn't even have like one of those back of the seat credit card readers that you see in many cities. He just had one of those square card readers attached to his cell phone and he showed her the app on his phone where he punched in 400 pesos and he took her credit card and swiped it. She's Canadian. Her credit card requires a PIN number like our US debit cards. She had to supply her PIN number and then he finally took her to the entrance of the resort and let her out. Now once at the resort she sprang into action. She knew that something wasn't right. She inquired with the hotel staff if it was normal for cab drivers to not take cash. They said no. She alerted them in quick enough time that they were able to take down the number of the cab. And then her fears were affirmed when she went to her credit card website to see that she had not gotten charged $20 that she had instead been charged, robbed of $1,000. This is why using the credit card was the right call. This was the path of least resistance. It allowed her to get out of the cab. And well, with credit cards, you have almost immediate recourse. You can immediately check your balances. You can immediately file a claim for fraud. And well, that's exactly what she did. She enjoyed the rest of her day at the all-inclusive resort that she had already paid for. And then she took a cab. 
She took a cab back to the cruise ship where she paid cash and everything went fine. Once back on board the NCL Bliss, she alerted the folks at NCL who in turn notified the port agent, who in turn notified the local authorities, uh, putting information out about this cabbie and his cab. Fortunately, she did not lose $1,000. The process with the credit card company worked successfully. The charge was flagged as fraudulent and the charge was removed. Like I said, this happened a couple months ago. I just talked to my friend recently and she, she really articulated well some things that she would have done differently. First and foremost, and this applies to all places where you get into a taxi cab, try to establish the price on the front end and ask the question, do you take cash? I think this one question about do you take cash may have may have dissuaded this cabbie from trying to take advantage of my friend. Another thing that she said that's really interesting is she said, make it, make it fun. Take a picture of the cab before you get in. Take a selfie with the cabbie before you get in. Make it seem like you're a full-on vacationing tourist that is taking pictures, taking records of what's going on. This level of exposure may have dissuaded this cabbie from trying to take advantage of my friend. And then the other big thing is when you're being asked questions about your status, whether you're alone, whether you have plans, what you're doing, always make it seem like you're meeting up with friends. She said if she could have answered those questions differently, she would have said that my friends, they're waiting for me at the resort. I would say something like they're just a cab ahead of me, something to let the person know that somebody is expecting them pretty quickly and that there would be challenges for the cabbie if they did not show up. I know some out there might say, well, you could avoid all of this just by taking ship excursions, but unfortunately you can't get ship excursions to everything. I just had a wonderful day at the Paradise Beach Club in Cozumel. There's no ship excursion for that. You have to navigate the taxi system in Cozumel to get to beach clubs like Nachi Kakom, to Chakanab, to Paradise Beach Club, to Mr. Sancho's. And well, let me tell you this, I've got a story. Even that cab process, if you don't do it right, can be challenging. It was just less than a week ago that I made that trip to the Paradise Beach Club. I made my way off of the NCL breakaway to the cab stand there in Cozumel, downtown Cozumel. I was with a group of five and as I approached the cab, I asked the cab driver for us five how much would it cost to take a cab to the Paradise Beach Club? He looked at us, he looked at me, and he said it will cost $22. I said, do you take cash? Thanks to my friend for that, he said yes cash. So we piled in, we drove to the Paradise Beach Club, and we gave the guy $22 plus a tip. It worked out exactly the way it should. Now the return from the Paradise Beach Club was a whole different story. There was throngs of people trying to leave Paradise Beach Club, and they were putting people in ones and twosies at a time into cabs so that they could get the most people in cabs as possible going back. And when me and my friend Don approached the cab stand, they said, how many are you? We said that we are two, and they put us in a cab that already had, I feel like, like seven or eight people. I think this cab would maybe hold close to 10 people. And we just piled in the cab. We didn't ask any questions at all. And we figured that they would tell us at the end how much it cost and we could kick in with everybody else. Well, when they dropped us off in downtown Cozumel, as we were exiting the cab, the cab driver was standing at the door saying, I need $8 from every person. I was one of the first out of the cab. I peeled off a 10, I gave it to the guy and I stood outside the cab as everybody else disembarked. But there were people in that cab that were shocked. They had had that same experience, the $22 experience or the $17 experience on the way over. They knew how much the cost was and they were surprised that it was costing $8 per person to get out of the van. The problem is nobody asked before we left Paradise Beach Club exactly what the charge was and it was really, you know, up to the driver to tell us as we got out of the cab. And again, are you gonna, are you gonna fight with the guy? You know, people grumbled a little bit, oh, this is a lot more than it costs to go over. But because nothing had been established on the front end, well, there you go. And look, these challenges are not just localized to Mexican cruise ports, not just localized to Cozumel and Puerto Vallarta. Make sure you are prepared every time you get off the cruise ship. Do you have a cruise port story, a challenging cruise port story? Leave a comment below. And I got one. I got one. I feel like I almost got arrested in Puerto Vallarta. Make sure you check this video out next. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.